Oh, the Wanderer returns. I've only been up Red Wreck. How's Najinsky doing? I'd better get back and feed him. You're lucky, you know that. Why? No lessons, no insurance, underage, obviously. A few steps on the wrong pedal into oncoming traffic. Why'd you do it? Maybe I should have stepped on the wrong pedal. Maybe that would have made things easier. Any other lad, Chez, I'd have up against that wall. I'm sorry. Girls don't go for joyriders. They do. Kenzie, Jun and Michael Finnegan nick cars all the time and they're copying off with girls left and right. Michael Finnegan? Are you serious? If you sing that song about the whiskers, though, he'll kill you. You know what these lads are, Chez? They're insects. I ain't do it to get girls. Look, I'm not going to give you that time. I think you know the score on that front. But what Fizz did for you taking the rap, she could land in a whole load of trouble. Did you know about that? Fizz? Of course it is. Oh, well, come on, back to ours. What for? Apologise. Bring your horse. Make sure one of the stable lads finds him some oats. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Apology accepted. Mom. No, hang on a minute, Sophie. You can't hide behind God when it comes to something like this. I mean, Chesney, what on earth were you thinking? Excuse me. I'm not hiding behind anything. You were going to say we should forgive him. We should. We can't go around taking other people's things because we know we can say sorry. I didn't want to say sorry. Kevin made me. Are you being cheeky? Is that back chat? So? No, it's not back chat, honest. I'm calling the police. Oh, don't. No, you're not, Sal. He needs to learn his lesson. Why do you think he did it in the first place? Well, I don't know. I didn't bring my girls up to steal cars. I hate John Stitt. That's why I did it. Chesna, hate is a very strong word. Shut up, Sophie. I wanted to drive to the prison, give him the ring back, and punch him in the face if I got close enough. That is possibly the worst plan I've ever heard. He's lucky not to have killed himself. He's sorry, so can we put all this to bed? Mum, is this sushi? Yeah, it is. Well, I think we should let Rosie decide. I mean, she's the victim of the crime. I'll sort it with Rosie. She'll have him hanging from a lamppost. Maybe for the best. Hey, stop it with all that. <laughs> Who have you seen eating sushi? Nobody. Does Luke eat sushi, Mum? I don't know what Luke has for his lunch. I bet he does. She's so impressionable. No, I'm not. Do you remember that time you started collecting safety pins after you seen that picture of Hugh Grant's girlfriend? Who told you that? Anyway, that was ages ago. It's not even true. Gail told me. Hey, can I go now? <laughs> oh, just when Eddie's trying to his nap. Are you alright, love? About average. You look like that dog of yours. If you were a Glum World Championship, she'd be neck and neck. I wish they'd sent me to prison. Only thing I'd miss is Schmeichel. Well, that's a foolish thing to say. To me, of all people. Everyone knows. Even Fizz tried to take the blame. Oh, crumbs. <laughs> crumbs, listen to me, that's what my mother used to say. <laughs> uh, it's your place, Gail, and before you say anything, it can't be our Gary. What's happening? The police have been in there ages. Yeah, well, not as long as our girl has. Well, what the hell's she doing in there? I don't know. I'm going to find out. Oh, well, I shouldn't, love. I don't know what you might find. Some junkie off his nut, this. Capable of all sorts in that state. Oh, will you give over? You're frightening the poor woman. Hey, it's for her own good. Hey, they might be in delicate hostage negotiations. She goes barging in, could trigger a bloodbath. He watches too much cable, then. All the same, maybe wait till they're done. Coppers won't want you uh, contaminating the crime scene, whatever's going on. Yes, all right. I defer to your greater knowledge of these things. Hey, this is one job that can't pin on us. Oh, where are you going? No point hanging around, is there? You've tea yet? I'll whack you some traps under. Come on. Hey, look, I'm sorry I kicked off a fall. It's just why I care about you. I want to see you tonight. You'll enjoy making up, I promise. Call me, yeah? If you're uh, <laughs> hard up for company, I'm uh, free all evening. 
I will never be that hard up. Trust me. You don't ask. You don't care. You don't care. I'm telling you, woman, it must be there to steal drugs. I heard Gail telling her mum. Mm. Who'd have thought it? You don't look like the junkie type. Mind you, neither did Frank Bob. Listen. Anyone who spends Christmas night pelting the neighbours with scotch eggs and assorted savouries. <laughs> it's always been highly strung, that one. Mm. It was only a matter of time before it went twang. Well, that would be great, thanks. I'll do the washing up. Will you, cos like, sit yourself in front of that telly. <sighs> I thought we could have a bit of your cake for pudding. No, no, it's my prototype. Prototype? It's a flaming fruit cake, not a fighter plane. It's Stephen Becker's wedding cake. I've got to ice it, then we can taste it. Your Marzi pan's always top notch. Proof of that cake will be in its consistency, and you've got an unbiased taste of sitting in there. I suppose so. And she's like a cake, lad. I, I like your opinion. Oh, yeah. That'll be it, sir. I'll make you a brew to go with it. Thanks. Now he's just watching a bit of telly. Has he been all right? No trouble. He's a credit to your love. He really is. <sighs> Not to me, no. He doesn't pay much attention to me anymore. You're his sister and he loves you more than you realise. Things are a bit complicated at the moment. I know. He's told me everything. About you. John Stape. I found him in Rosie Webster's car. Made him see he was being daft, not that he took much persuading. Oh, he's a sensible lad at art. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Oh, thank you so I'm much. not after any medals. Deep down, he knew it made no sense. But he's confused. Well, let's face it, at his age, most lads are. Yeah, it's not his fault. Not yours either. Sometimes your art takes you to strange places. I know that. Every morning I turn over and see what's on the pillar next to me. <laughs> but as a mother, well, I've seen how things can spin out of control so quickly, so easily. If I'd have been a bit more savvy, nip things in the bud. Oh, I know it must be hard on you. I will put one foot in front of the other, leaving that visiting room. I won't wish that walk on anyone. I know how it feels. Of course you do. Yeah. Look, I'm not saying that Ches will end up in bother. But Gary wasn't so different as a boy. I think you and your brother need to sort things out. For both of your sakes. Not another slice, mate. No, thanks. I'm stuffed. Uh, not too heavy, is it? Oh, no. It's going to need the bride and groom on top to hold it down, but <laughs> I've had three slices already. What do you reckon to the walnuts? I would open it and give it a nutty finish and a bit of texture, like. Definitely, yeah. Uh, your sister wanted a word. <sighs> There's nothing to talk about. I know what you did for us, and I'm grateful, but it changes nothing. Not as long as you always stay. Ches, we can't carry on like this. I'm your legal guardian. I'm responsible for you. You don't want social services sticking the beak in. Go home and work things out while you still can. <sighs> I'm not going back. I'd rather dust on the streets. Ches, please. Ches, near lad. I need it. I'm not going back. Well, look. I'll try and find somewhere else to sleep for now. Hey, I'm sure Janice... Don't be daft. He can stop here tonight in Gary's room. Can I? Provided you sit down with Fizz tomorrow, when you've had a chance to sleep on things. That all right? Now, you're always welcome. No questions asked. Anything you need? Someone to chat to? No, no. Cheers. Proper grease monkey's overalls, that is. Feel the quality of that garment, it's like it's never been worn. Well, that's because it hasn't, you dopey beggar. He suffers from allergies, clobber like that sets them off. Why, is he allergic to the material or something? No, just hard graft. Don't listen to her. I had an industrial accident. 
First day on the job? You spilled tea all over his nether regions. Hey, I, I'm still traumatised. Still, the stain came out okay. Right then, I suppose I'll be off. Hey, not like that you won't. These are going to need taking up. Can you do it? Well, I was thinking more your sister. Oh, you can't keep avoiding a chairs. Thanks, guys. You've been brilliant. What's ours is yours. Now, get lost. Have you seen John today? Um, well, I'd like to be there for about midday. Oh, well, don't get too excited, will oh, you? Oh, I'm just worried about the ring, if he notices it hasn't been altered. Look, just slap on a bit of lippy and wear something with a bit more uh, presentation to it. I guarantee you his eyes will be more than gainfully employed. Oh. Chesney! All right. Are you OK? Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't I be? Nice overalls. Very hunky. Cheers. Eddie gave us them for the garage. Oh. I reckon they might need adjusting. Oh, come here. Right, stand still. You don't mind? Mind? It's what big sisters are for. They totally lost it and broke into the medical centre. Half the street saw it. Poor Joe. It must be in a terrible place right now. Poor Joe. What about poor Gail? She's the innocent party in this. Yeah, of course. It's just being stuck in here, I've learned to sympathise with the addict. I took it about you. You're my weekly fix. <laughs> Give over. Hey, you sustain me, Fizz. That beautiful smile, your hair. <laughs> All right, calm down. It's only a bit of lipstick. Flippy, back. Good job I didn't listen to Julie and go the whole hog. Why? Well, what's she been saying? Oh, uh, let's just say she gave me a few tips about my appearance. We'll leave it at that. Well, that ring certainly completes the ensemble nicely. <laughs> I see you finally got it back from the jewellers. Yeah. Didn't need that much doing. <laughs> well, it couldn't look more perfect on you. Fizz, what's wrong? Nothing. I just miss you, that's all. Never mind a weekly fix, I need you home. Hey, Ireland! <laughs> so, well, is this all defo? Well, to be honest, I was half hoping that... Well, you know how me and Tony have gotten dead close recently? Oh, get away. <laughs> yeah, well, it might be obvious to you, but nothing's happened. He's not even made a move or anything. And do you want him to? Well, half the reason I said I was moving to Ireland was because I was hoping he'd... Oh, he'd... forbid you from going. Take you in his arms and tell you he can't bear to live without you. <laughs> See, he doesn't even seem bothered. Have you told him how you feel? <sighs> Maria! After everything you two have been through, you can't even talk to him. Mm, I don't know. I mean, what if you don't feel the same way? Do you know how hard it was for me to admit that I still love John? Hey, after everything he did. But I know in my heart that I'm doing the right thing. I know that he's the right one for me. Mm. I mean, good for you. And I mean that. Yes, so never mind me. What about you and Tony? <sighs> hmm? I mean, talk about falling on your feet. First she's in jail with me, then she's living rough, now she's marrying Steve McDonald. I mean, why can't that happen to me, eh? Why can't some cracking bloke be interested in me? Oh, I don't know, Kel. It's a mystery. Hey, what do you reckon to Tony Gordon, eh? Shacking up with your brother's widow? Is your life really that boring that you have to gossip about my family? Oh, well, pardon me for breathing. I'm really sorry about that. Can't see any bruises, eh? Hey? Well, how did you take it, Chesney? Right, you're getting married next week. Oh, you have told him. I, he was only in the house like ten minutes all weekend, apart from when he was asleep. Honestly, I want to tell him. I do, and Kirk. 
be a relief. This wedding's stressy enough. I'm going to tell him at tea time. Oh. Pam, we're not wasting precious shopping time on the weather for your wayfair, right? Well, it's only a recce, right? I don't want to rush buying this dress. Sexy, but understated. Oh. You don't want to drive John Wilde and have him dragged off to a padded cell. <laughs> Sorry, insensitive. Fizz, I'm getting chips. Do you want some? No, ta. Can you lend us a couple of quid then? Oh. Oh, cake! I'll pay you back. <gasps> right. What's Hang the on. rush? I'm shopping. For my wedding dress. Yeah. So what's the rush? You're going to find out anyway. I'm marrying him next week in prison, but I want to tell Chesney myself, OK? Did you get him out in your brakes? They'll be dry for dinner time. They're soaking. I'm saying I forgot my kit. I'm not wearing my old ones. I'm not. I'll take the tension. I don't care, Fizz. You should have thought of that before. You'd never think of anybody else. You OK? She does my head in. I'll make you a butty, mate. I can't believe she told you on the phone. But for what it's worth, I'm annoyed and all. They should wait till he gets out of prison. Wait? Will you choose to get married in, Nick? Is that in a couple of months? When's she getting married? Hey? When? While he's still in prison? Kirk? Isn't that what you and Fizz were arguing about? Oh, the stupid cow. <laughs> Chess. Where's Fizz? Dinner break. Oh, excuse me. Where's Fizz? Not here. Sorry. How about I tell her you were asking? Uh, how about you apologise for shoving me? Shut up, you stupid cow. I want you back to the bus stop. Uh, Luke, are you going to let him talk to me like that? Apologise now, you little shrimp. Oh, what? You're going to beat me to death with your makeup brush? Come on, mate. You can see she's not here. Mate? Get lost. Make him apologise now. He's upset about something. Oh, so that makes it all right? I'm sorry about that. No, I'm done. They're gorgeous. I'll keep him at mine. I shouldn't have bought them, though, should I? It's going to be hard enough trying to find a dress without having to match it with shoes. We will find the right dress. And if they don't go, we'll change them. Calm down. Oh. <sighs> Oh, aren't you excited? Yeah. I'm, I'm just... I'm going to feel better once I've squared it. Ooh. Hiya! Sorry about your games, Kit Chess. What'd you get? Oh, they're mine! Oh, yeah, don't be rude! What size feet have you got? When's the wedding? Chess, Chess, You're marrying him in prison, now. aren't you? Uh, shall I, um... When? Please. Chesney, I was going to tell you, honestly. I don't want anything that's too traditional. No train or a veil. I'd look stupid. You'd look lovely. Julie's got a really good eye for fashion, so um, she's going to help me. <laughs> I can't believe it's actually happening. Six months ago, my life was rock bottom. Now I'm catching stardust. <laughs> that's what my Annie Joyce used to say. If you got a right spring in your step, you'll be catching stardust next. <laughs> That's the rubbish I'm spouting. That's being locked up for you. It's sweet. I never really thought I'd ever get married. Let alone in a prison. You're glad you are, aren't you? Of course. And Chesney, he's glad too. Yeah, of course he is. Can't wait to see him on Monday. <laughs> well, the thing is... He's not going to be able to come to the wedding because he's got a school, see? Well, they'll understand. His sister's getting married. I know, but he's missed that much already. I don't want him to miss any more. It'll be all right. Just ring up and talk to the head. They'll give him the time off. It's an important year for him. <laughs> it's just one day. Anyway, he'll be one of the lucky ones. They'll let him out after the service. <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't joke about being in here. But seriously, don't worry about the school. They'll understand. Don't 
think I could. It's just a few words. I'm not that good with words. I'm not you. Well, no one's going to be judging them, are they? That's the thing with vows. You can say whatever you want, as long as it comes from the heart. Oh, now I'm worried. Yours are going to be amazing. Just try. If that's what you want. OK. <laughs> now, listen. What you said about Chesney. What about him? About him not coming to the wedding. Because you don't want him to come. Why wouldn't I want him to come? I've told you, he's really happy for us. Yeah, I know. But it's this place, isn't it? You don't want him to come to the prison, do you? Well, yeah. Actually, yeah. I don't want him here. You do understand, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. It just shows how caring you are. I'm glad you understand. But it'll be OK. I've already talked it all through with the chaplain. Chesney won't see anything of the prison. They take him straight through to the chapel and the governor will make certain that everybody will put him at his ease. Oh. Because, like I said to the governor, I couldn't go through with the wedding unless Chesney was here. It wouldn't be right. We're going to be a family, the three of us. Hiya. Hey. Good visit. Oh, great, yeah. An hour with a table between us and six sets of eyes watching our every move. Oh. Fizz, I I've got something to tell you. Let me guess. It was you who told Chesney about me marrying John on Monday. I thought he knew. He was in a right shop with you and I thought he found out. I knew I shouldn't have told you. He needed to know. Yeah, and I was going to tell him, Kirk, in my own time. Why couldn't you keep your nose out of it? Why'd you have to get involved in my life? Get one of your own. That's not fair. And you know something, Kirk? Life's not fair. Look at me. This is meant to be the happiest time in my life. But I'm lying to people, I'm deceiving John, I'm upsetting Chez, I'm shouting at you. It's just all wrong. I've got John banging on about how we're going to be all one big happy family. Why can't anything ever go right for me? Can I do anything to help? Just leave me alone. I shouldn't have had a pop at you, Kirky. There's no need to apologise for totally unfairly having an insane screaming, Benny. <gasps> Mercy God, me. Deserve everything I get. Div. I was out of order. It's your marriage, your job to tell Chess. Yeah, I know, but I didn't, did I? I know you've got pathetic whack to spout. You don't understand, Chesney. Star-crossed lovers and that, innit? But I don't want to know. You've got to front up to it sometime, mate. I'll let you know when I've got a window in my busy schedule. Do you need to say something comforting? Yeah, please do. It'll probably come out in the wash. Nice try, no banana. Oh, look busy, Jan. She's the boss when the boys aren't here. As if she'll ever let us forget that. <laughs> On the nail as always, Jan. Right, Luke's out all day. I'm in charge. Backed. Now, can you tell me? What these are? Um, are they part of the Rosie Webster pre-aged knicker collection for fashion conscious slappers? Oh, gross. <laughs> By co-workers. <laughs> More faulty goods. Pants, pants. I wonder who made them. Let me guess. Damn. You are going to have to do so much better than this. My name is going to be one of these one day. Hmm. I do want a rep for awesome quality. You've got a rep for awesome stupidity. I mean, do you really think they're going to go with them poxy designs? Oh, why do you think you'd be making samples? Draw a few frills around the backside of a stick, man, and you're still on a corner. I mean, they're not going to go with that tart, you big little tart. <laughs> they're just humouring you. No, run up a few samples, keep little Miss Moneybag sweet. They're not going to produce them. <gasps> they so are. Oh, look at your mighty visage. You know, you're so gullible. <laughs> Where's that, dear? Wetting ourselves, laughing at you. 
Do you know what a teenager is? A constant reminder to use birth control. Oh, thanks, Jan. You're a tonic. They're the worst things to have in your house. I think nature does it on purpose to help with a weenie. You just want to see the back of them, you know. Which teenager is this? Chesna. Oh, yes. What's his problem? I know Leanne gave you L to pay, didn't she, when she was that age? Still does. Look at who she's hooked up with for starters. You wouldn't get me chewing your ear off for that. Peter's been a disaster for every woman he's ever met. I know you love him. I do know that. Good. I've always been second to some deadbeat moron boyfriend of mum's. I know. Uncle this, uncle that. Moving him with a stranger that I had to pretend to like. Uncle Les was alright, but this is the first time. You, me, Schmeichel and Kirk. Why are you going to ruin it? Oh, this, this isn't about you. Not now, Kirk. No, it's all. It, it's about me and John. He's my man and we're going to be together forever. Listen, I am not like Mum. You sound like her. This is how it's going to be. Like it or shift out. Don't compare John to one of her bunk ups. This is real and it's forever. And I'll be looking after myself again. Ches! Hi, Chesney Love. Are you all right? Yeah, Tar. How about Fizz? I haven't seen much of her this week. She's been busy. Uh -huh. I'll be in in two ticks. Hey, now that's no job for a lady. <laughs> You know, I swear the birds round here do the business on these windows more than usual. Yeah, I blame Ben's drinking. Well, you think they'd wait till they got home? <laughs> but it's Norris's day off. Tina isn't in till later, so as per, down to Muggins. Look, well, I'm really missing Amber because she was a demon with that mop. Oh, I'm sure that's the last reason for missing her. They grow up so quickly, don't they? Where does all the time go? I ask myself that same question every day, love. Come on. Oh, thank you. So, what's the plan for your birthday tomorrow, then, Faith? Hold on. I'm getting a premonition. <gasps> drinks in Rovers, followed by... More drinks in Rovers, followed by... Someone suggesting going into town, followed by everyone else arguing about buses, taxis, etc. Then deciding not to bother, followed by more drinks in Rovers. No, I haven't really planned anything. Uh, I just did all that for you, Faith. Come on, Biz Bomb, you gotta do something. Well, it's not like she can go out for a nice romantic meal with John, is it? Kelly? Well, you know, it'd be all right if they had one of them conjugal rights caravan thingies. You know, like in films. Don't come a knocking if caravans are rocking. Oh, don't be so crass, Kelly Crabtree. You're not interested in celebrating Fizz's birthday. You're just looking for an excuse to get bladdered. Uh, did I say all different? Oh, have a word, Luca. Fizz is trying to swerve drinks with us for a birthday tomorrow. It's up to her. I just don't want to make a big fuss, that's all. Luke, go and check out that mad zipper I was talking about. It's like this massive pair of red lips. It'll be perfect for flat. I thought she only bought biscuits. <laughs> well, you might as well be the first ones to know. I'm even in with Luke. <laughs> what, she's moving in? What, were you? Never mind the gossip. How about you lot getting back to doing what you paid for, eh? I was passing this charity shop and I saw it in the window. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, really nice. Will it need altering? No, no, not much. It fits really well. I know it's not exactly traditional, but then again, the wedding won't be either, will it? Just me and John and the registrar. And a couple of guards and a finger buffet. <laughs> Listen, if you still need a maid of honour, or, or just somebody to hold your hand. No, um, Tar. Tar, but I am 
Still hoping that Hayley will change her mind about that one soon when I get back from this steam rally thingy. <laughs> are, are you sure you don't want to tell Sean and Janice? I know they'd want to know. Oh, no, no. It'll be all of the factory in seconds. <sighs> they can be a bit gossipy. Julie, that is like saying Marilyn Monroe is a bit dead. <laughs> no, just with Ches still furious with me, the last thing I need is this wedding getting back to Rosie and Sally. I just want to enjoy the day. And you will. <sighs> hey, remember, love conquers all. <sighs> anyway, I need to get my skates on. I've talked Eileen into helping me out with my annual lasagna for the homeless tonight. Oh. I'm trying to prize her away from her new plasma screen. Jason says she watched nine upstairs, downstairs in a row last night. Can't be healthy. Fizz, I need your help. Uh, oh, Kirk, I I'm due back at work. I've got a job interview this aft. Dental hygienist. Dental hygienist? I've always loved them things you put in your mouth, that's what you spit out. Oh, Kirk, no, I've really got to go. It's just, I've got quite a few fillings. Do you think that's a plus point? Uh, like, having all the fillings means I'm familiar with the dentist from a personal point of view, but not having fillings means I take care of my how teeth. How about we talk about it on the way to the butchers? I have to go and pick up this mint for the lasagna and the shelter specified organic. Whoever said beggars can't be choosers wants to meet this lot. Uh, oh, great. Ta, Julie. Come on. You all right, Chess? Yeah? You had your tea? No. Want some? Hiya. Hiya. Oh, I've just taken Liam round to see Gail now. Oh. I think she's getting obsessed. Do you want a brew or something? No, you're all right. I can't stop. Just wondered how the wedding plans are going. Oh, terrific, yeah. Um, Chesney's not speaking to me. I haven't heard from Hayley, so I don't even know if she's going to come. Well, look, Fizz, I can cancel this trip to Paris, you know. Tony would totally understand if you want me there with you. No, Ta. It's too late now, anyway. Got to give the names to the prison well in advance. I know, dead romantic, eh? Well, I didn't get it, did I? Didn't get what? Did Fizz not tell you? Dental hygienist. I felt like a right div. I go in this room, and it's all like 16-year-old girls giggling. I think they thought I was a dentist. They're all like whispering and pointing at me. Kate, you start on my dress! Yeah, look, see? It's fine. It's no harm done. Yeah, don't get your wig wet shouting at me. I've just had a really embarrassing experience. You've had it? Will you listen to yourself? Fizz. I'm getting married next week, Kirk, in secret. Chessie's not talking to me, that's thanks to you. Do you really think it's my job to give you the ins and outs of dental hygiene? I just wanted your help. I'm not your mother. I'm not your sister. I'm not your girlfriend. I know all that. But I thought you were my mate. Oh. Oh. We've got mini chicken Kievs. Oh, yeah, I bought them. Mouth shut you, we've got a guess. Again. Maybe I better go. Don't you dare. That is disgusting. Remember when me and your dad had that big fallout? A few years back, I found Eddie had spent our entire Christmas fund on knock-off Japanese beer and dry-roasted peanuts. You were only too grateful to spend your tea times at your Auntie May's then, weren't you? Well, I had no choice, did I? It's like World War Three at home. Look, do you want to play? Come on, I'll beat you blind, though. <laughs> do you reckon? Clocked up a lot of hours on this, you know. So what's your World War Three? Oh. I'm leaving. Right. It's not because of our help. Right. Don't try and stop me. My mind's made up. I've been thinking about it loads. I've been really racking my brain cells and... What, both of them? <laughs> See? I've got to get away from your negative vibe. You and me, it's not healthy. And besides, after everything you said about John and that, he wants a little family here. Eh? And I don't want to be sat there like a wally in the corner, a spare part. I'm so sorry, Kirk. But I think it's for the best. They call it closure, the Americans. And that's what I need to get. I need to ship up, 
and shut out. Paved the way for a brand new future for you. And for me, like. I've not got low self-esteem issues all out. Have you been watching a lot of daytime television, Kirk? Just Judy's kind of hot since she went blonde. What's going on? Sorry, mate. But a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And I've got to do this. I do what? I'm moving out. He's lived here longer than you. It should be you moving out. I haven't done nothing! You've taken a gun and you've blown my family apart. That's what you've done. Oh, easy on the melodramas, Ches. Well, you may as well have. Just get a grip, Chesney. I'll get a grip. Right round John Stapes' throat. Oh, lovely, that. I didn't bring you up to say stuff like that. You never brought me up. I did. I tried my best. Well, your best is lousy. Oh, shut up, Chesney. Oh, I think we need to take some heat out of the situation here, so... Oh, what do you suggest? Should we have a word with Graham and the aftercare team? Ches, mate. You and me. One last brew before I go, eh? What do you say? Come on. Take care. It was nice knowing you. I thought you said this wasn't goodbye. It's not. It's our reservoir. Thanks for sharing my life with me, Chesney. It was well top. I hope John's proud of himself. Your lunch break's nearly over. Bruning Kirk's life like this. Chesney, he's moving out. He's not got a brain tumour. Don't be too hard on her, Ches. You've got to be there for her. I'm here with her. Worst luck. Don't have much say in the matter. The family should stick together. See you, Michael. Ah, Kirk! He's just been licking a frisbee him in the backyard. Take care, puppy dog. These two will look after you. She'll probably force me in chocolate. Poisons dogs, that does. See, Kirk. Good luck. Wherever your travels take you. It's a long and winding road out there. But I'll walk it wherever it takes me. Oh, hey, Kirk. Where are you going? Can I move in for a bit? Uh, Please, you're the only family I've got. Oh, look, the baby's crying. You better come in. Where have you been till this time? Oh, you know, just went for a quick drink with some of the girls from work. No point in lying. I know you went to see him, like you did on my birthday. Any excuses and you're over there. I thought you'd forgotten. My birthday. I just chose not to celebrate it. Your prerogative? You have been to see Stape. Talking all posh like that. Well, can you blame me, Ches? He's the only person around here who's half nice to me. Well, can you blame me for not making a fuss? I bet no one has round here. No cards, no brezzies, nada. Because you're still knocking about making a show of yourself with that freak. Well, I don't care what you or anyone else thinks, because come Monday, I am going back to that prison and I am going to marry that freak. Where's Eddie? He's out cabin, why? Oh, my new friend, that's an old. You want to come in? Can I have some of that? Kirk always lets me drink. Come on. Watch your babes. Oh, hiya. Happy birthday, sugar tips. Oh. I brought you this. Oh, top. <laughs> Thank you. That's really <coughs> kind. A kiss, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, you haven't seen Chesney on your travels, have you? Oh, no, I'm not sure as I have, no, puppy. Oh, right. Why, has he not come home? Has he disappeared? Are you destroyed with it all? No, no, it's just... We had a row and stuff, and... Well, I've just come downstairs now, and he's gone out. Oh, well, teenagers are alluring to themselves, bobbing in and out wise. <sighs> My mother never knew where I was from one moment to the next when I was his age. <sighs> And I had a troubled background. Do you want to come with me to the party, take your mind off it? Uh -oh. Go on! Oh, but I've got no slap on! Oh, well, that is easily remedified. <sighs> Your dressing table awaits. <laughs> oh, and I'd, um, I'd put a dress on, if I was you. Uh, and maybe a couple of jazzy hair slides. <laughs> yes, Julie! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry, you see Matt's off for me. Not my dog with your homophobia. Can't even spell it, never mind, be it. What? Are you alright, Jay? Yeah, it's fine, thanks. Hey, don't talk to me, mate. It's me, mate. You might have got through to the final, and you could win five grand. But I called the organisers of the competition tonight and told them you back for the other side. Have you come round here to cause trouble? He's taking a mick out of my people. Your people? Your dream's over, Jason. You won't be showing anyone up ever again. Have you been disqualified from the competition? He has got a pony. Oh, don't start, Sean. We need that. You'll see, I'm steering Clara. I'm getting married in morning. What was that? Like nothing. <laughs> Why need to boogie? So, your last night of freedom ish. Yeah. Hardly freedom for John, though, is it? What? Being shackled to you? No. Being stuck in that place. Oh, you'll be out soon enough. I bet you can't wait. I don't know, it's going to be weird though. I'm used to being on my own now. Oh, you love every minute of it. I've won prizes for my disco dancing, thank you very much. Oh, Bobby used to call me the Rams Bottom Freestyler. Oh, right, well then, let's have a dance off. Okay. What exactly do you mean? Just something like this. Woo! Hey, we should find a dance suit. We could be a female diversity. I can't bear that, Piers Morgan, can you? I'm not being racist, but people with red faces actually make me heave. He's vile. I hate him. He kidnapped Rosie Webster. I don't particularly like Rosie Webster, but he kept her locked up in his grandma's attic for like six months or something. Is that the behaviour of a sane person? Yeah, he was a right learner in the nick. Looks liked him though, you know. He'd write letters home from him. Help him read letters back. He still did what he did. He must be a glutton for punishment. I mean, all that time with Rosie Webster. She might be a fox and all that, but five minutes of her screeching and drive anyone demented. What is lovely, Maria? <laughs> no, I thought it might come in handy for you on Monday. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't be there. Oh, well, that's all right. No, it's not. It's your big day. No, I don't want to make a big fuss, so... I feel like a bit of a fraud, anyway. Why? Well, it's not like I'm walking down the aisle of Salford Cathedral in a big meringue, is it? <sighs> Doesn't matter where it is, as long as you love him. I saw this film the other day. Carousel. Old Hollywood musical. And there was this girl... Julie Jordan. She was in love with a wrong and Bill Bigelow. <laughs> he was in trouble with the police. But she sings this song. What's the use of wondering? It made me cry. Fizz. What's the use of wondering if he's good or if he's bad? Or if you like the way he wears his hat? 
what's the use of wondering if he's good or if he's bad because he's your fella and you love him and that's all there is to that come here <laughs> oh i'm sorry <laughs> Is this a bad time? No, don't be daft. Come in. I just thought you might be chairs, that's all. Why, where's he gone? He stayed over at Anna and Eddie's last night. Oh, but he's coming to the prison with you, right? He hasn't said. There's still time. So you're set? Yeah, I think so. Nat's coming over soon to do her stuff. Oh, go for the ringlets. John likes it natural. Oh, well, John doesn't have a say. Today is about you. You got any last words of advice? Oh, enjoy yourself. <laughs> well, I best get going. I don't want to miss the Luke and Rosie show. Well, give me all the gruesome details later. Definitely. <laughs> oh, what am I like? Do you know, I'd forget my head if it wasn't screwed on. I put it in here to be all clandestine like. Oh, Julie, it's gorgeous. Oh, I only wish I could be there to catch it. Me too. I never expected you and Dad to make the wedding in the first place. No, no, that's not meant as a criticism. You two have been brilliant. I know you'd be thinking about me. Mum, please don't cry. Mum... Look, there's a queue forming. Yeah, I will. Um, Fizz sends a love to. I'll see you in a few weeks, yeah? Okay, bye bye. You okay, son? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's just suddenly hit me. I really am getting married. <laughs> you got any last words of advice? Don't end up inside again. And always remember marriage isn't just a word, it's a sentence. Yeah. Speak to him about today. He left us go before he had the chance. Well, that's it then. He's not coming. Hey, it's not over till it's over. That's right. The lad's confused and upset, but I'm certain deep down he wants to do the right thing. And what if this isn't the right thing? You take that back. This is no time to start doubting yourself. It's a bit hard not to when even Roy and Ailey blow you out. Now, you listen to me. End of the day, the only people that matter are you and John. Wow. I just hope they got plenty of security laid on, because you are going to cause a riot, girl. Thank you. Oh! oh <laughs> Hi. Hiya. Come in. We'll be in the kitchen. Yeah. You look... You look lovely. Ta. Fizz. You're not coming. The clothes kind of gave it away. Please understand, this isn't a decision we've taken lightly. Hey, come on, I know that. We're not taking sides. It's just that... Chesney suffered so many losses in his young life. Not to say that we're suggesting that you've failed him in any way. So, simply put, Hayley and I find ourselves in an impossible situation, whether it's the right course of action. How can he ever forgive us? Hey, there's nothing to forgive. Chesney needs you guys. Honestly, I'd rather be alone today than have him feel abandoned. Oh, well, then tell him that. Make him understand. It's too late. Oh, Fizz. I know you'll be thinking about I'm me. I'm so sorry. So this is it, I suppose. Wish us luck. 
you, you've always brought light into our lives, Fizz. And I know you'll, you'll shine today. It's time. Yeah. Oh. Well, you are flaming kidding me. I thought I told you to clean this pigsty. I haven't had the chance. Lloyd's had me driving around like a lunatic this morning. Oh, a likely story. I'm sorry, love. It won't take a sec. Where's the fire? I've just seen this outside. I might be seeing things. I think she's got a wedding dress on. Have you been on the Red Bull again? No, no, no. I'm serious. Come up yourselves. Well, she doesn't need a scene. <coughs> Perhaps we should go back in the house. Oh, too late. See? Told you. Shock and crushed feelings aside, you look stunning. I'm so sorry about this. Excuse me, how come you knew about it and we didn't? She was trying to protect me. Oh, charming. Well, I didn't think you'd understand. Oh, no. What's to understand? You're only marrying a convicted kidnapper in prison. What she means is, you didn't even give us a chance. We are still your mates, Fizz. Oh, yeah. speak for yourselves. Oh. Mm. And I thought I could be a cow. Rosie, look, I'm not doing this to hurt you. <laughs> like a car. Wouldn't stripes be a better bet where you're going? <laughs> Leave her alone. It's okay. Let her have a say. Oh, so kind. First of all, I'm not angry. It's more like pity, I suppose. Because if he is the best you can get, then you really are damaged goods. I love him. Even better. Because when Johnny Boy flips out again, I'll be on the front row, watching you suffer. Cos no matter what, all you think, I didn't ask for what he did to me. But you, you're practically begging for it. I just hope for your sake that you've lost the death to his part bit. That is a terrible thing to say, Rosie. Thank you. Call it my wedding gift. <sighs> Let's just go. Hey, hey, not so fast. Fizzbomb, you're crazy. <laughs> but you're my kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll be with you in school. Oh, thanks. Be happy, Fizz. <laughs> you're carrying your words, my lady. Hey, what about your bouquet? Oh, yeah, that oh. is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah! Well, my need is greater. <laughs> Look at it this way, it'll be something to tell the grandchildren. Good luck, love. Too badly yourself. <laughs> okay, you're embarrassing me now. <laughs> Sorry. It's just. I've been dreaming about this moment for so long, and now it's actually arrived. <laughs> Thank you. We're ready for our guests now, Officer McAllister. Okay, what am I missing? It's just you and me. 
The others couldn't make it. What do you mean they couldn't make it? Oh, it's a long story. Let's just get this over with. Fizz, what's going on? Nothing. But this is just about us. No one else matters. We're gonna need another minute, sir. Sit down and tell me exactly what's happened. Chesney was never coming. I don't get it. You said he was excited. I made it all up. Everything. He hates you. He hates us. I'm sorry. I just always thought he'd come round in the end. I see. I was thinking of you. I was scared how you'd react. So. These wonderful tales of loving solidarity and community support. It's just the Websters and a few others. You know what people are like. Well, clearly I don't, otherwise I wouldn't have believed you in the first place. I want to know everything. This marriage begins with the truth or not at all. I know I probably should feel terrible, but I don't. I actually feel loved. Honestly? You're not just saying that. Everything you did, you did for me. You sacrificed almost everything for us. How are we doing? Yeah, I think we're ready now. Fizz? Fizz, these people are waiting for us. Perhaps another few minutes. Okay, you're starting to freak me out now. Please don't be angry. Then please talk to me. I'm still lying, John. Well, I'm sorry, I thought you, you said You talk that... about sacrifice, but it weren't. It was sheer pig-headedness. You and me against the world. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Except I don't want it to be just the two of us. Not today. Not ever. Once we're married, Ches will learn to accept it. But by then it'll be too late. You said our marriage has to start with the truth. You were right. I can't lie to myself anymore. I can't pretend I can do this without my brother. I'm sorry. But I, I just can't marry you. Ben? Like what? Say you don't hate me. Of course I don't. I love you. I just wish things were different. I really thought I could do it, you know? That somehow it'd all work out. I kept thinking any day now, Ches will realise how much you mean to me. Change his mind. He still could. If we went ahead with this, he'd never talk to me again. I can't lose him. I can't just hurt him like that. What about me? I'm sorry. Have you got a hanky? Oh, sorry. Oh. That's right, you keep him. Something bar a day. Do you know, maybe I should just go. No, please don't. The, whatever you decide, whatever happens, I've still got an hour left with you. I don't want to lose that as well. Stay with me. I already owe you 20. Hello? Oh, I'm losing you, man. Yeah, it's really bad signal, yeah? No, I, I'm, I'm going to have to... You've been at the L again? No, why? Because you look pig sick. So would you if your sister were marrying a mental case. Oh, well, yeah, I forgot. It's the big day, isn't it? It's what time's kick-off? Don't know. She's at the prison now. Only moon's going to be a bit of a downer, isn't it? Look, man, you sure about all this? Oh, what? Giving the wedding a swerve. I'm not going. I hate Stapes' guts. What about your sister? I don't care about her. Yeah, I can't say I blame you. How do you mean? Well, from what I've seen, she's kind of a div. 
No, she's not. Oh, come on, Ches. She's marrying a bloke in prison. How sad's that? Having said that, I don't suppose she's got much choice. What? Well, she's a bit of a five-pinter, isn't she? Shut up, Gary. What did you just say? I said shut up. What, you're not going to make me, are you? I think you're big enough. Just don't talk about it like that. I thought you didn't care about her. Just answer me one question. Do you want to be with me? It's not just about that. There's other things involved, other people. I saw Rosie this morning on my way here. What did she want? It wasn't to wish us good luck. Well, I've apologised till I'm blue in the face. I've even given her money. Look, if I could change what had happened, I would, but I can't. It's not me you have to convince. Please, Fizz. Don't throw this away. Not if you really love me. You know I do. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Then marry me. Because whether we do this now or in ten years' time, the past is always going to be there. And we're going to have to face it one way or another. So let's do it. Here. Today. I'm sorry to interrupt, but time is running out. I need to know what you've decided. I'm sorry. Can you let me out now, Toast table four, please. Look, you didn't want it sunny side up. Sorry? No offence, but you couldn't exactly mistake it for happy hour in here. I think Anna is making a less than veiled reference to a noticeable lack of uh, joie de vivre. No, I'm referring to the fact that you both look dead miserable. There's a reason for that. Yeah, you're both thinking you should have gone to Fizzy's wedding, so... It's not that simple. I know. I know it's none of my business, Good, but... because table four's egg is solidifying as we speak, if you wouldn't mind. Table four. I haven't said that. I'm... Ah, Chesney, what? Can you lend us some money? Well, uh, certainly. Uh, how much are you thinking of? Uh, do you mind us asking what it's for? I need to get a taxi to the prison. Oh, Chesney, I don't think you're going to make this change your mind. Not now, love. <laughs> That's not where I want to go. I don't understand. Whenever I've done something wrong, or everyone else has let us down. She's always been there for me. I still hate what she's doing, but maybe now it's my turn to be there for her. Well, go on then. He needs a lift, you've got a car. What are you waiting for? You're right, Roy. Um, go upstairs, get the visiting orders out to the sideboard, change your cardigan, I'll get the money, I'll meet you both on the corner in a minute. <laughs> She's had a lucky escape, don't you? Hey, it's got nothing to do with me. Yeah, but you know what I did, why I'm here. Keep your nose clean. A couple of months you'll be out of here, then you two can have a proper wedding with your family and friends, even a few drinks. What friends? They practically disowned me. Fizz was all I had left. Now I've lost her as well. You're not going to do anything daft, are you, sir? What do you mean? Well, there's more than one way to uh, tie the knot in this place. No, I'm not going to do anything daft. Good. Because the paperwork's a right pain. Yeah, can I get a 
taxi, please. Boss. Yeah, I'm sorry. This only does over 40 downhill. Don't tell me. Gretna Green. Weatherfield. Coronation Street. I'll just shut up and drive, shall I? Weatherfield. Yes. Hey, Lee. What's up? Stop! What? Stop the flaming car! Sorry. What for? Missing your wedding. I never got married. Why not? Because you weren't here. I'm here now. Please. This isn't a hotel, love. You can't just swan in and out as the mood takes you. It's a wedding day, mate. Give her a break. I take it you got your visiting orders. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. It's not as simple as that. No, I know. But you must be able to do something, speak to someone. Well, the registrars will have probably gone by now. Oh, no, Hayley, I knew it. It's too late. Oh, look, I know it's a bit of a faff, but please, would you mind just checking? Jacket back on. There's been a development. I can't believe you came back. I bet my eyes are all red and puffy. I've never seen you look more beautiful. I thought that was it. I thought we were finished. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for coming. You've no idea how much this means to me. Well, um, to both of us. Shall we? Make a start. I'd like to welcome you all to this very special occasion, the marriage of Fiona Brown and John Stape. When I sat down to write my vows, I thought, so much has been said about love, most of it by much cleverer people than me. So I I thought I'd quote one of the great romantics, Byron, Shelley, Keats. But then I started to worry. I thought, my fizz won't have no truck with that. <laughs> the words I use should be my own. So, fizz, from my heart and with every fibre of my being, I love you. And I promise that I'll always remember to put the toilet seat down. <laughs> and I'll not leave me socks in a heap on the floor. I love you. And respect you. 
and be honest and true to you forever. Will you take Fiona Brown to be your lawful wedded wife? I will. Fiona Brown, will you take John Stape to be your lawful wedded husband? I will. Please repeat after me. I give you this ring as a token of our marriage. I give, I give you this ring as, as a token, token of our marriage. And the sharing of our lives together. And, and the sharing, sharing of, of our, our lives together. together. That's it. You're now husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Chris. <Thank> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Chesney. Well, I wish you every happiness in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Fiona Stape, it's proper classy, that. Yes, it has a certain ring to it. <laughs> Thank you so much for today. Don't you have me filling up and I've got a bit of mascara on today. I don't want to end up with panda eyes, do I, Roy? <laughs> Pro probably not. <laughs> right, can I get you all in a line, then? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's it. Usually rubbish at this, chop everyone's heads off. Oh. Give it here. I've got an old level of photography, mate. Go on, let's have a look. Say cheese. 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 Go on, Gonzola. <laughs> right, let's have one of the bride and groom. Oh, yeah. You're gorgeous. So are you. Now, do you want the arty ones of people's feet or out like that, you know? No, it's all right, thanks. Sure, I'll actually get a couple more. There you go. One more. Nice big smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it, I'm afraid. Oh, what, it's the end of the film? Um, is it a 36 or a 24? I mean, uh, uh, we're done here, so it's uh, time to be going. Already? Sorry, son. Right, ladies and gentlemen, make our way to the reception. Yes, sir. Folks. Right. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. You've made today really special for us. I love you. I love you. No regrets. Can't believe it's over. It's all gone so quick. As soon as I get out, I'll have all the time in the world. Sorry, love. It's time to go. for a little drink? No, thanks. I think me and Chair should just have a quiet night in. Pizza and a DVD, eh? Right. Well, we'll leave you to it. Hey, come here, you oh. two. Mwah. I love you lots. Good luck, Fizz. You are so going to need it. I was going to sneak in and move your stuff around. Where you think you've got one of them poltergeist? Oh, isn't it sad to think your new husband's being detained at Her Majesty's pleasure? Oh, well, hope you don't mind when you turn, do you, eh, Fizzbon? <laughs> mean beggars, eh? You'd think that I'd let you get a quick leg over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Eddie, cough it up. It might be a gold watch. <laughs> I think I've swallowed a bit of confetti. What a way to go, death by confetti. Oh, look, a celebration cupcake. Don't mind if I do. Take two. The very light. How are you doing? Okay. Oh, you're a smashing lad, Chess. You've done your fist proud today. Hey, I'm loving the cake stand. Doris, dad, one just like that. <laughs> Everyone, 
Raise your glasses to Mrs. Fiona State. Oh, very Wilmslow wife. <laughs> Mrs. Fiona State. Oh, oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, Chesney, love. Give us a smile. Ooh, he's up. I can see fillings. <laughs> it's nothing. I got a glimpse of what he had for breakfast. I always wanted a pair of them X race packs. It'd be great to see people's insides. No, it wouldn't do for me. I'm proper squeamish. Oh, dog. I bet you'd like to sneak a look at bare naked ladies, eh? Oh, I, I go for the ones that let you see the skeleton and that. They're like Jason and the Argonauts in real life. Oh, I feel sick. I must have had a dodgy pie. Yeah, it'll be now what to do with that half bottle of vodka you've poured down your neck. <coughs> I bet it's them cakes. That Eddie looks proper grumpy. Hey, do not diss the cupcakes. He could teach Fanny Craddock a thing or two. I bet his underpants stand up on their own. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they run round bedroom and Anna has to beat him into submission with a yard brush. Oh, <laughs> oh be a minute. Sorry. Oh. Getting married in a flipping prison. So they would have been proud of her. Somewhere in there. You know, you on your own. Him in there. Not how I imagined it when I was little. Still, I'm glad I did it. Thanks for being there, Chaz. Meant the world to both of us. I did it for you. Yeah. I did it for you. Because you're my sister, and well, you know. Yeah, I know. I love you too. Why do people say I slept like a baby when they've had a right good kip? Dunno. I just say I've had a right good kip. Little Liam never sleeps more than three or four hours. He wakes up in the middle of the night, every night, yells his head off. It's dead quiet there without him. Only me and Ozzy. But it set me thinking. Right. I miss having you to tell me thoughts to. I know. It seems weird you not being at ours and all. We still mates, yeah? Of course. Cool. Here he comes, the lad known to the area girls as the ginger Zac Efron. Get lost. <laughs> hey, it's the flame-haired Zac Efron. What? There's no wedding cake. Is that going to be funny? Oh, but you got to run us over somewhere else and it's a forfeit. Mm, say, history on work. No way, that took me hours. No cake, you've got to pay. Go on then. <laughs> hey, which are eight girls? Oh! Hiya. How are you, Mrs. Stitch? Okay. Does it feel good to be called that? Yeah, actually it does. And was it worth it? After all that you've been through. Oh, you're talking like all the hassle's over. Do you not reckon it is? No, probably not. 
what it's done now, isn't it? Hey, love, come and have a coffee. Tell us sad love what it's like to be married. No, I just <gasps> popped in to see Lou. Oh, you know what? In the nose, you've been having some right set too. Sat, not sat, sat, not I'll sat. sat. I'll catch up with you later. Yeah. Oh, see yourself. Come on. Come on in. Oh, Tal, sorry to bother you. You're not. Before I come back on Monday, could you change the name on the um, clocking in card and stuff to Fiona Stay? Sure. I can't believe you actually went through with it. It's now to do with you. Of course it is. He locked me up for five weeks. Whenever you walk in here, it's just going to be a reminder. You might abduct his wife. We should sack you. On what grounds? Mental torture. You haven't been too traumatised when you've been spending his 150 grand. Yeah, well, I don't make a big deal of it. Maybe we should blame him for you being unable to have a grown-up relationship. Maybe that's down to you, not being able to see Michelle Connor for the old slapper she is. See you Monday. <coughs> a little sum up from me and Eddie. Oh, Anna, there's no need. Well, I'm sure you weren't exactly overwhelmed with presents. Well, come on, get it open. Do you mind if I don't? Why not? I want to wait till me and John can do it together. You can tell us what it is, though, can't you? Oh, no, don't! Yeah, then if it's not suitable, she can change it before John even has to open it. True. It's a slow cooker. Oh, great! Lovely! Yeah, then when you're out all day, you can come back to a casserole. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, well, we thought you newlyweds would have far more interesting things to do than cook. <laughs> Oh, heck. It shouldn't be like this. It should be me and John together. Hey, he's due to be out soon. Some of the happiest times a man and Leslie's marriage were when he were inside. <laughs> Are you going to see him? Later. I've got to go to the council now. See about getting us rehoused. You moving? Well, I've had Rosie having a go at me already this morning. I don't want John to have to go through that every day. Oh, I don't think she's any right to do that. Not after accepting all that money from John. Do you think that makes any difference to Rosie Webster? Well, Mum and Dad will have a word with her, surely. Plenty of couples make a fresh start when they get married. Maybe it'd be best for us, too. The bloke at the council reckons it could be more than a year before we get another house. So you'd have to stay put? He did offer us a two-bed flat on the Arkmore estate. Oh, I don't think you'd like it there. Can't be that bad. You want a bet? It's that flaming rough. Drug dealers grinding pairs, never mind the police. Fire brigade and ambulances don't go after dark and taxis don't go at all. You're not serious, surely? Well, when Harvey Nicks and Harris take over them burnt-out shop units, it might cheer the place up a bit. Oh, suddenly being sniped at by Rosie Webster seems almost attractive. Yeah, about two. Mm -hmm. Wanna come, Cockles? Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. What homework do you want to copy? Well, is it? I consider it a thank you for the history homework. Mm -hmm. So, you any good? She's rubbish. She even has to have the rails up at the sides. I do <laughs> not, that's you. <laughs> anyway, we're going for a burger as well. We're riding Ben later, if you fancy that one. Yeah, cool. Alright, see you later. All see you later. Right. Right, cheers. Hi, Sal, you all right? Don't ask. Is she in? Did you wait until we were out of the country on purpose? Don't you come in here shouting your mouth off. What are you, sick, stupid or just downright bonkers? Hey, just calm down, will you? Marrying that psychopath. You disgust me. It's now to do with you. It's got everything to do with me and my family. That man, your husband, is... is evil. You are asking for a lamping lady and I'm just in the mood to give you one. Oh, well, you make a right good pair then, don't you? A thug and a kidnapper. Come on, hit me. Whoa, stop it. I don't know how you can even talk to him again, let alone go through with this sick charade. Let me tell you something for nothing, Mrs Stape. That husband of yours doesn't belong amongst decent people. So if you've got any thoughts about moving in on this street with that pervert, you can think again. Don't worry, we're moving. Good. A bit of sense at last. 
You are? When? Where? Chaz. Chaz, we've not totally decided yet. Honest. You can go, I'm not. I only went along with that, what did Sally call it? Six charade of a wedding for your sake. I hate that man. Don't say that, Chess. And all the time you were planning on moving away. Leave this house and all my mates. And you weren't even going to tell me about I it. I was, it was just a... You know what? You're as bad as our man. Making a fool of yourself over some bloke. Actually, no, I was wrong. You are so much worse than her. We don't have to move, Just Chess. shut your big lying gob for once. You've lied and lied from the very beginning. I don't want to listen to it anymore. Me. I had my phone on day and night in case of emergencies. Rosa getting married would be an emergency, right? Miss Brown getting married to a bloke she's been engaged to. They're trying to pretend they're normal people, Sophie, but he's a, a psychopath and she's... Well, heaven knows what she is. Just forget about it, Mum, and move on. Hey, you must be joking. This isn't the last of it by a long chalk. Have you thought for one second about Chesney, my mate Ches, while you're accusing his sister of doing all sorts? That stupid girl ought to be thinking about Chesney, not me. What the heck's all this shouting about? Fizz has only gone and married John Stape in prison. Yeah, and somehow that's my fault, is it? Because you didn't bother telling me, you stupid girl. Hey, 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 there's no need for that. Why on earth would I bother telling you because I knew exactly how you was going to kick off? You weren't doing well enough when they got together. You went to prison because of that man. He did the most awful things. Yes, yes, I know all this, Sally, OK. But you don't need to take it out on sofa. Oh. And you, don't push your luck either. Your mum's really upset about this, and so am I. Without you getting cocky about it, okay? Wow, if there's not one thing causing rows in this house. Kevin Webster. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know where that is. Yep, yeah, I'll uh, be there as soon as I can. Yep, yeah, see you soon. You can't go out now, Kevin. We need to talk. I can't leave him stranded. Tyrone to do it. Well, so you know he's busy. But what about Stape and Fizz? Look, I hate what's happened as much as you, but I can't think for the life of me what we can do about do you know what? it. I've already been over there. I've told them they're not living across the street. Oh, do you know what? I'm going out. What about your tea? I'm not hungry. <sighs> do you know what? This is ruined this holiday for me, this house. Look, I've got to get going. I'll uh, see you later. Well, how long are you going to be? Well, I don't know. Oh. Good evening, Mrs. Stape. That's not fair. You've always been Mr. Stape. It doesn't sound any different. Well, how about husband? Yeah. Hello, husband. Hmm. How have you been? Good, yeah. That lot from work and some of the neighbours threw a party for me last night. Really? Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, they must be happy for you. They are, yeah. How about you? Spent my wedding night with all older murderers, con men and arsonists. But apart from that... Prepare you for meeting the rest of my family. <laughs> Any family that includes you can't be that bad. What's wrong? Everything. Well, come on, tell me. Oh, I've had both the Webster witches shouting at me. Sally came round to the house, threatening all sorts. Well, we did expect that from them, didn't we? Was it just bile or something specific? She won't have us living on the street. It's not up to her. Yeah, but it is, though, in some ways. I don't want Kevin having a go at you. Sally and Rosie shouting abuse and stirring up all the neighbours. Fine. We can live anywhere. Might be better if we did move, eh? He's capable of out. She's right to hate him, I do. He's married your sister. He's clever and sly. He acts dead normal and you think he's not such a bad bloke. Then he goes and does something mental. Well, he's not going to do out after being in prison, is he? If 
People do learn lessons, Chesney. You've just got to give them the chance. You two aren't going out, are you? Oh, yeah. Why? Well, you look like an old married couple sitting there, lost in your thoughts. Can we talk about out but people being married? Oh, now what's happened? Fizz and him getting married is going to ruin my life. Oh, I'm sure it won't. You don't understand. He's right. How do you fancy coming for some of Eddie's new Madeira cake? You can tell me whether it's any good, and maybe we can see things in a different light. Surely Chess can see that moving's the best option. This is the first house he's ever felt settled in. He's got friends. Me. And now I'm saying our best option is to move to a two-bed flat on the worst estate in Weatherfield. I bet you wish you'd never clapped eyes on me again. That is just not true. You know it isn't. Then we'll get through this somehow. I suppose. There's no suppose about it. I'll think of something. How? I don't know. But in here, that's the one thing there's plenty of time for, thinking. I'll come up with a solution. I promise. <laughs> hey, up, didn't know we had guests. They're trying your dad's new Madeira cake. You know, if I lived here, it'd be like the side of an house. Does he know? <sighs> you don't like outsiders trying new ones first? It was an emergency, love. Oh, All right, what's up? Did you make it to your office's wedding, then? Yeah. Ah, oh, good lads. What's the emergency about? I'm going to have to move because of her, man. <gasps> You've not got Sophie pregnant, have you? Gary. No. <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, we're just mates. <laughs> Why do people even think we're going out? You know, I'm sure I used to have a toy train that was harder to end up than you two. So why is she driving you away, Ches? It's not me, it's Fizz. Marrying State. I'm just collateral damage. My mum don't think they should be able to live on the street. Oh, and that's it? Oh, come on, Mum, you've been giving cake away under false pretenses here. You don't know my mother. And it's not just that. I don't want to live with him. Anywhere. Well, you can always stop her if you need to. Eh? You know, if it gets too much playing Gooseberry, leave them to it, her and John, her and Sophie's mum, whatever. Hey, that'd be dead cool. No problem solved then. As long as you keep away from my beer. Hey, no, it's yours. Hey, just got back from visiting. Wondered where you were. Where I'm welcome. Chairs, don't be like this. Would you like some cake? No, Ta. Come home, eh? Let's sit down. We can have a chat. No need. You and him can do what you like. I'm sorted. What do you mean? I'm moving in here. Move in with someone else. Gary says I can. No, I said if things get too much for him. Which they are. And we've got a spare bed, he wants to be here, so what's the problem? Anna, were you telling this is stupid? Well, what oh, if... I don't believe this. It might give things a bit of time to settle down. Maybe Sally will see reason. Why won't anyone listen? You don't know, my mum. And you might find somewhere to live that'd make Ches happy. If it's with him, forget it. And... You and John, you might like a bit of time on your own, being newly married and where he's been. You know. Chesney's place is with me, not with a family he hardly knows. I'd rather live with anybody, even sort of strangers than state. Fizz, I'm not going to live with you and him. End of. OK. Fine. But Chesney, we will talk about this on our own, without an audience. Uh, oh, I've had my head down the bog all night. Well, <laughs> thought it was best if I had a day in bed. Well, I don't want to pass it on, strike down the old workforce. Oh, oh, I will do. Yeah, thanks, bye. <clears throat> bye, bye. Oh. Chairs, it's me. Take it you're still at Hotel Windass. Can you let me know when you're coming back home? I do worry. Bye. Well, if he's taking the trouble, it's private. 
He's just whittering on about what's going to happen when he comes out. What about when he comes out? He wants to live here with you, doesn't he? And what do you think about that? You know what I think. But, Ches, we're married now. He's my husband. We're going to have to sort out where we're all going to live. Oh. You can live where you want, and I'll live where I want. Ches, mate! I brought you that book you needed. All oh, right, Ta. Are you stopping? Um, can't. My mum's on the warpath. What have you done? I've done nothing. It's them stupid letters. John's been sending everyone. She's going mental. Letters? What letters? You don't even know about it. Well, I know he wrote to Chess. He wrote to everybody, Fizz. Everybody. Even Eddie Windass. Oh, everyone except his wife. Just ask him what we all think about him coming to live back on the street when he gets out. And he's written to all the neighbours. Anyway, my mum's organised this meeting in the pub tonight to try and stop him. Oh, no, John. Do you do a thing like this without warning me? He's quite good at lobbing in the old curveball. Last time I saw him, I told him me and you had had words and that you didn't want to move. He said, leave it with me. Man of his word. I can't believe he's written to everybody. I wish I could see all these letters. Whatever he was trying to achieve, it has backfired massively. It's just played right into Sally's hands. She'll be on a mission now. I won't worry about her. But I do worry. What John's doing, he is trying to be sensitive, you know, listen to people. Whereas Sally, she's just trying to incite the mob. Maybe nobody will turn up. The pub could be empty. It's like he's been to court, he's been to prison, now he gets to go to court again, but the court of Sally Webster. Ignore her. I can't ignore him, it's not fair, Ches. Someone should be there to speak up for him. No seat. I said we should have got here earlier. Frank exchange of views is all very well, but if it descends into rabble rising... It descends? Look at Sally Webster. Good evening. Yeah, well, it just shows you how strong public feeling is. Well, have you written a speech? No, Rosie, I'm going to speak from my heart. Well, Mum, keep it short, cos I'm meeting Minnie in a club in half an hour. Right, could I, um, can I get everybody's attention, please? The earth is flat. <laughs> I'd just like to say, um, a few words. Firstly, I'd just like to say thank you all for coming, because I know how busy everybody is. But the well-being of our children is something that we all care about. And we have to do everything in our power to protect them. Here, here. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Sal. Yeah. Sorry. Is this a private party? No, no, you're just as entitled to be here as anyone else. More entitled than some we could mention. I thought you were pooler. I've made a miraculous recovery. Come on, Sally, you speak up, love. As you all know, a year ago, my daughter Rosie was abducted by John Stape, her former teacher. They're a cheap stunt, a pathetic attempt to curry favour. John Stape wants you to think that he's a decent, honest man who served his time. He is! He is not. He is a devious... I'm sorry. He's a devious, manipulative predator. This is unfair. Yeah, well, you wouldn't be saying that if you had an 18-year-old daughter, Roy. Well, that's irrelevant. Why? Well, Amber's in the same class as Rosie. She could have been the one. We don't have to take this. I mean, we can say no. At the end of his letter, he says, I would be grateful for any responses which might help Fizz and I to come to a decision about our future. Oh, Give him the response that this letter deserves. Write to him tonight and tell him he is not welcome on this street. Yeah. Would you there, Sal? Yes, Sal. In fact, I, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to burn this letter and I'm going to send him the ashes. I'm sorry, this is like a meeting of the Ku Klux Klan. We can't allow a pervert to live on our street. He served his sentence. It's not up to you where he lives. Hey, hey. Well said, Kenny boy. You would say that. You're an ex-con as well. Well, I find myself in the unusual position of having no sympathy for the criminal or the victim. 
All John wants is to put what happened behind us <sighs> and make a fresh start. Fine. Well, go and find somewhere else to live. We have got Chesney to consider. Why should my daughters, why should I have to put up with you and John walking down our street? How is that going to make us feel? John is deeply sorry for what he did. He said so in court. And he has never tried to wriggle out of any charges. He has taken his punishment. He said sorry over and over again. He gave Rosie the money from the sale of his grand's house. Yeah, that was a ruse. You drive around in a sports car that you bought with John's money. He owed Rosie that money. Mm. I love John. I know what he did was wrong, but he is still a good person. He's writing to you all to ask for your permission for us to live here. He doesn't have to do that. He's doing it because he cares what you think. He knows, just like I know, that you are all good, decent, fair-minded people. Thank you. Woo. Oh, you finished your round? Are you going to visit John? Yeah. Can you give him this? Oh, Chez, I can't. It's against the rules. What's it say? You might as well read it yourself. Fizz, just to let you know, clever speeches in the pub are all well and good, but there's enough right-minded people who would rather see your husband in hell before they'd see him living round here, OK? Sally, get stuffed, OK? Go on, would you like for school? So my Auntie Doreen used to kiss me, except she smelt of gin. Why didn't you give me some warning about your little stunt with those letters? I'm assuming the use of the word stunt means you're not ever so happy. Well, where do I start? Let's see. How about having to take on half the rovers last night? I was almost expecting them round the house after closing with pitchforks and flaming torches. You've got to be joking. Nothing did happen, surely? In the end, no. Thank heavens for that. Then there was having to talk Ches round after your letter. Oh. I made a right mess of everything, haven't I? Not entirely. Eh? Well, whatever it said, he took notice of. He is prepared to live with us as long as we stay on the street. Fantastic. Not if half the neighbours want us out, though, is it? So, who was giving you our time in the pub? Sally, of course. Dev, Eddie Windass, Blanche. She wrote to me as well. She'd have been one of those women in the French Revolution, sat next to the guillotine, knitting. I think she'd rather be the one chopping the heads off. But on the other hand, as well as Ches, I've had support from Roy and Haley and Ken and Deirdre Barlow. Really? Yeah. Now, it's easy for me in here. I never thought I'd say that. But you're the one who's got a face up to the rabble rousers. Can you do it? Last night, when I was having a go at them, it actually felt good not to be apologising, trying to make peace for once. And it'll not be long now till I'll be by your side. We'll face them down, Fizz. It's a war we've got to fight, but it's a war we'll win. You know what? You're right. I love you. Good. Because I love you too. <laughs> <laughs>